All right, so this is part three of the three-part series for um, the wedding glow filter effect. So in part one, what we did was we went through and we did a portrait retouch um, and went through some of the kind of the basic steps in doing that and learned a little bit about the tools. In part two, we went and we did the um, sharpening technique that I showed you. And then in part three, what we're going to do is the actual wedding glow filter effect. And if you're familiar with uh, traditional photography, this used to be done with a soft tar filter. And that's where you would put the... Um, the filter at the end of the lens and you would shoot uh, your wedding scenes and you would, it, and, and the output would basically be these really nice soft glowing kind of Oprah Winfrey production style photographs and they're beautiful the problem with doing it the old way is in is that that glow effect was cast across the entire um, composed shot and you didn't get the opportunity to um, um, pick areas where you want a detail to show through and no glow unless you were a highly skilled um, darkroom photographer and you could do some of that work in there though it was never as sharp as what you can do in a digital darkroom like Photoshop. So um, <clears throat> I learned this particular technique um, a few weeks back from Eddie Tapp, the great Eddie Tapp. Look up Eddie Tapp, he's awesome. And um, I'm going to stick to his orthodox way of teaching this, um, but I'm going to point out a couple areas where I deviate and have kind of turned this into my own um, my own technique uh, to some degree, at least where I've built upon it. Um, so that said, let's get straight into it. And here's the retouched layer that we did earlier. And I'm going to duplicate this. And again, you can do Control J or you can just drag it down here to the new layer icon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Filter and I'm going to go to Blur. And now here's one area where I deviate from, um, from Eddie's technique. Now Eddie uses a Gaussian blur. And um, I've actually gone through the different blurs and whatnot, and I've, um, my preference is the surface blur. So I use a surface blur technique. I think it works for my style a lot better um, than the Gaussian, but the Gaussian is equally good. Um, so go ahead and select Gaussian. And Eddie came up with this great little um, formula for determining the radius size. And that basically is to look down here at your pixel data. I'm sorry, not your pixel data, data but your file size, which is right here on the left the 6.36 and you basically use that as your radius and I'm just going to round down and say 6.0 like it is and say OK and then what you do is you click on um, your blending layer and you select darken and what that does is it takes um, basically what this does is it looks at the tonal values between this layer and the one below it and the tonal values are different in this layer because we added that blur and and what the darken um, overlay does is it takes the um, the stark contrast of the dark tonal values from the top layer and compares them to the bottom layer and it highlights those and brings them out. You can see it right here. Um, and it looks like sketch lines, right? So then you turn the opacity of this layer down to 35. And whoops. And so it's at 35 now. And what it did is it kind of gives you this. I'm going to zoom in here. Um, what it did was it um, actually gives you this what looks like a sharpened look and I've actually used this before as a sharpening technique um, or at least a variation of this and it works pretty well um, so now uh, what we're gonna do now for the next step in the in the process is we are going to drag this layer down to the new layer icon and we're gonna duplicate it and this time we're gonna switch the blending layer to lighten and it's gonna do the same thing that we just talked about with the dark in blending mode except for um, the inverse and we're going to bump this up to 60. Okay, so now you can start to see that, that glow come, come into play. And now, again, this is how it would have looked traditionally with a traditional um, photographer, uh, you know, using traditional photography um, skills. And it's still a beautiful shot. It gets a nice soft glow. Everything about it's great um, and whatnot. But because we're in the digital age, we now can extrapolate the details that we want to keep, like for example, the eyes and the lips, etc. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to combine these two layers into one group. And now they're in a single group. You can see them on and off. And underneath is that detailed um, version of the image that we started with. What I'm going to do on this group layer is I'm going to um, mask it. And if you're not familiar with layer masking, then go back and look at my Photoshop 101 classes, um, and I believe uh, it's called Introduction to Layer Masking, and that'll give you kind of an overview of what we're doing. So here I am. You can see my layer mask. I'm going to switch my brush to black, and I'm going to make sure that I'm using a soft brush, and you can determine whether or not you are by um, 
clicking this drop down arrow and looking at your hardness uh, level and anything 1 through 10 is generally considered a soft brush and anything above especially towards the 100 percent is a hard brush and you can see um, the difference here in a soft brush are like these right here and they have um, soft edges so that you have a nice blend when you do your uh, your brushing the hard uh, edged brush on the other hand has a very stark um, outer layer so I'm going to keep my uh, brush there. I'm going to up it just a little bit in size and I'm going to start to zoom in on the eye so I can do this really detailed and I am on black color which is good because I have a white layer mask here and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to paint out some of the glow which is in turn going to reveal the detail on the layer underneath and I can get grab all that image data and expose it. I'm also going to do the eyebrows find that the eyebrows um, look best if they're in focus. And I'm going to do this eye. And again, I'm just doing a quick job here for the um, purposes of the tutorial, and YouTube only gives me 10 minutes. Um, so I'm just going to kind of fly through this. And there you go. You can see already that our eyes are starting to look really nice and detailed. And the other part that I always do is the nostrils, um, and right around the edges here. I find that uh, detail there really helps. And for the lips, I generally bring uh, my opacity down to 70, which is it's at right now. And I'll go over those. And I'm actually going to up my opacity back to 100 because when I do eyes, I like that to be at 100% so that they fully come through. And now the other thing that I do in terms of detail is the hair generally. Um, I like the hair to, to stand out with some detail so that the, the picture doesn't look too um, touched up and too glowy and soft. There we go. You have to forgive me, I'm using a mouse instead of my Wacom tablet, which I'm really used to. Um, I don't have it with me at the moment. Then it feels a little, uh, a little naked in that sense, um, at least as an artist. Now, so I've gone through and I've done that. And I am going to, and I just want to point one thing out here too. I'm not going to do anything to the groom. I want the groom to be out of focus um, slightly and to have that glow effect. And the reason is, is because he is not the central um, figure in this scene. He is actually a supporting actor, and she is the one that where I want to draw your eyes. So he actually helps funnel. He and the uh, glow help funnel your visual attention right down to her beautiful face, her bright eyes, her bright lips, um, and whatnot. So. He actually serves a great purpose and, and, and does it quite well. Um, now, if, if this is too much glow, what you would do is you'd back off the opacity on that layer. And if it's too little, you can always just duplicate the layer and get that. And I'm going to um, actually back this down 50% so that it's not quite double in terms of the glow. And I'm going to combine these two here just to show you the difference. See that? So you still get that really nice, soft wedding look, um, that wedding glow effect when compared, right? Now, again, if it's too much, you back it down a little bit to wherever you're comfortable and whatever you want for your style, and you call it good. That's basically um, the Eddie Tap version of the wedding glow effect, filter effect. It's beautiful. Try it on some of your um, own images and see what you can kind of come up with and play around with different uh, techniques and, and blending layers. and and, and try and add to this or, or you know build upon it at the very least because um, I think if you do you'll really find it to be a useful um, technique to have in your bag of tricks